I said, here's a guy that could have done whatever he wants. I could, he could go to his island. He could go to us. He, he's got property everywhere, very well set up. But this is what he decided. This is important to him. He wants to expose the corruption, the demonic elite that is really I know having dinner with him and breakfast and stuff with his wife, they are really focused. They're really serious. Uh, very, very serious. Very serious. And, and he's uh, helped inform Governor Abbott and stuff? Absolutely. He has sat down with... Um, all of them, basically. Pretty much all of them. And, um, you know, those are those are his... his Inside baseball. That, yeah. that I wasn't part of, so I don't know exactly what was... Well, he, he was just telling me that a lot of people are awake now. Yeah. Which, which I pick up on as well, talking to folks. Yeah. <laughs>
which is so hyperventilating and self-righteous, it's merely an excuse for reporters to explain that they're morally superior to Donald Trump. You know, he's a bad person. They're great people. It's it's a vehicle for their vanity and self-aggrandizement. It's it's disgusting. Um, and you know, there are things about. Trump that I don't agree with, and there are certainly things about his rhetoric that I think ought to be more precise, that he'll explain better. Um, but none of that really compares in emotional impact to the feeling I get watching the press whine about him and declare him dangerous. Every time I hear that, I feel like sending him money. I agree with you. What about uh, what about Senator uh, Leslie Graham? I mean, excuse me, Lindsey Graham. Uh, the beauty queen, he is up there just saying it's race baiting, xenophobic, religious bigot. Let's watch that clip from the Communist News Network. Well, I want to talk to the Trump supporters for a minute. I don't know who you are, and I don't know why you like this guy. I think what you like about him, he appears to be strong when the rest of us are weak. He's a very successful businessman, and he's going to make everything great. He's going to take all the problems of the world and put them in a box and make your life better. That's what he's selling. Here's what you're buying. He's a race-baiting, xenophobic, religious bigot. He doesn't represent my party. He doesn't represent the values that the men and women who wear the uniform are fighting for. I've been in the Air Force for 33 years. I retired this June. He's the ISIL man of the year, by the way. Just got back from Morocco a week right, ago that's this enough. Monday. Hillary, we played the clip last hour, also says he's playing right in the hands of ISIS. Last time I checked, he didn't run the State Department that helped build up ISIS. We have the former head of defense intelligence himself saying that. Tucker, let, uh, let yourself talk. Jump in here. Where do you see all this going? Well, I mean, Lindsey Graham is the one who doesn't represent, obviously, the views of the Republican Party. Look at the numbers. I mean, I, you know, I don't dislike Lindsey Graham as a person, but he has no constituency. And he has, it strikes me, no deep knowledge of the region. He's the one who's forever telling us we need to arm this or that group about which he knows nothing. He's not an Arabic speaker. And yet he's always telling us this is a group of freedom fighters and your son needs to go fight on their behalf, et cetera, et cetera. It's every bit. In fact, it's more reckless than anything Donald Trump has ever said. Here's the real reason people like Trump's recent statement on stopping Islamic immigration or putting a pause on it. The message is really clear. Donald Trump, I, I would be shocked if Donald Trump awoke in the middle of the night seething with hatred toward Muslims. I don't know, but I doubt it. He does. I think Donald, Donald Trump is just really worried that we're going to see more terror attacks in the country. And you look at Europe and its inability over 70 years to integrate and assimilate large Muslim populations. And it does make you wonder, like, what do you, you know, we don't want to be Sweden or Belgium or France. So what steps do we need to take in order to not become them? That's a totally reasonable and rational conclusion to reach. So maybe you don't think that stopping all Muslim immigration is the answer, but, but at least the question is an essential question. And only Trump seems to be asking it. Why That's right. is that? Well, it's an extreme statement, but it's extreme to have 80% being military age men, 80 plus percent right. fake passports. The, mainly these are Sunni invaders into Syria, that's all admitted, who, who got their butt kicked. They're now going into Turkey, going into Europe. And just a month or so ago, Trump said, hey, we've got to let these poor refugees in. We've got to take them. His own constituents said, hey, a lot of them are terrorists. He got informed. And then he changed his mind. He knows there's going to be more terror attacks after Paris and now San Bernardino. That's right. And they're taking him out of context. He, he doesn't dislike anybody. Well, exactly. And again, you have to compare the recklessness of Trump, and sometimes he is reckless, with the recklessness of the people who now run everything. And Lindsey Graham is a perfect representative of that group. Right after the Paris, Paris terror attacks, Lindsey Graham was not only calling for more Syrian immigration into the United States, but saying anyone who opposed it was somehow a nativist or a bigot or a bad person or immoral or on the wrong side of God. Really? I mean, there's no room for a debate on this? I mean, ask yourself the question, does any adult really believe that Germany will be improved by a million refugees from Syria and surrounding countries, Pakistan, because they're not just Syrians? I don't think anybody really believes that. And yet Time Magazine just gave Angela Merkel the Person of the Year award, and it is effective an award to congratulate her for doing that. What's the effect of that kind of immigration? It makes the people in power feel virtuous. They get to feel like good people, but they don't have to deal with any of the consequences sure. of it. They don't send their children to public school. They don't, they're not competing for jobs with these people. They're surrounded by armed bodyguards that taxpayers pay for. There's really no downside for them, but there's a massive downside for everybody else. They are out of touch. They really don't care about the effect of their policies on the people they're supposed to be representing. And we really ought to be outraged about that. And I'm hardly like some wild-eyed populist. I think I'm pretty reasonable and mainstream. 
But it's worth being mad about that. Madder indeed than you are, than people are at Donald Trump. Like, sure. who's really at fault here? Well, let's take Huma Abedin, who I notice you have a picture behind you uh, of her on your wall with that Ringling Brothers. <laughs> uh, it actually does look like her. Uh, Hillary Clinton's special friend. I don't care if Hillary has special friends. I'm a libertarian like you are. But if this was Trump or a conservative, we know there'd be a spotlight on it. And then her whole background, she seems to just get away with everything. I think that also sticks in people's craw that these Democrats and establishment Republicans are above the law. They don't get reviewed. They don't get looked at. And then Hillary's little hippo, uh, she can do whatever she wants and, you know, stay in the same hotel room or whatever. I mean, this should be looked into. And then Drudge and you and others get criticized for investigating Hillary's health, investi investigating her taste in women. I mean, isn't all of this open game? Huma Abedin, let's just assess the public record, okay? That, that's enough. I mean, I'm willing to give everyone a pass on their private lives or whatever. Why do you have a picture of her on your wall? <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. It's, it's from the 40s. It predates even Huma. Uh, she sent out an email two days ago in which she called Donald Trump, quote, a racist for opposing Islamic immigration, as if Islam is a race rather than a religion. It's not a racial ethnic category. That's insane. Now, that is exactly the kind of language, of rhetoric that divides people, that makes people hate each other, that whips the population into a greater frenzy. Again, that's every bit as irresponsible as anything Donald Trump has suggested. And unlike Donald Trump, she's actually in a position of, of power. I mean, Huma Abedin was a, was a federal official, a State Department official, up until pretty recently, a, a, a Clinton administration, I mean, a rather an Obama administration official. And yet she can send an email like that out and nobody cares. You know, it's, it's fine. It's just a reaction. He's dangerous. No wonder she's upset. It is all of this. The Trump phenomenon is a reaction against that. And I tell people who are upset, a lot of Republicans in Washington, as you know, are horrified by Trump. They hate him more than they hate Obama. He's a direct threat to their power. And I always say to them, there's a reason he's here. And that's because you have been a bad steward of this party. The president has been a bad steward of the federal government. A lot of the business community have been bad stewards of the economy. The people running things haven't done a very good job. So it shouldn't surprise you that someone like Donald Trump arrives on the scene and gets really popular by telling the truth about your failures. Like, why is that shocking? Tucker Carlson is our guest, Fox News, foxnews.com, dailycaller.com. That's got to be the quote of the last week or so, the most crystallized, boiled down truth that last 20 seconds. That's it. They don't dislike him because he's a bigot or he's hateful. They hate him because he'll win. He's not part of their power structure. They've been caught working with the Democrats, and he represents the Tea Party, the Libertarians, taking over the grand old party and kicking, uh, you know, these weasels out of Toad Hall who have invaded and taken over, and he is a bellwether of that, and they're panicking. What's so funny is they're uh, in a uh, lather this morning about the idea that he might run third party. Here's a newsflash. He already is running third party. He's already broken with Republican orthodoxy on economics. He's attacked the hedge fund people. He's broken with them on foreign policy. He's pointed out the Iraq war was a disaster. That's not allowed, but he did it anyway. He's being attacked by the head of the RNC. He's hated by donors. He's hated by lobbyists. He's hated by the entire Washington establishment and the other candidates. Or some of them say they won't vote for him. He's, so he's incredible. Actually not, he's not running as a Republican. Here's a newsflash. And maybe that's why he's succeeding. Because the, uh, And again, I've always kind of voted Republican because I don't see the choice. But the truth is the Republican coalition for 40 years has been a combination of libertarian economic policy and neoconservative foreign policy. And neither one has worked for a lot of people in the middle of the country. That's just the truth. Knockout is back. If you want a product that has 10 known ingredients that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, so you get deep restful sleep, knockout's it. InfoWarsLife.com, L-theanine, hops flower extract, lemon balm extract, valerian root extract, chamomile flower extract, L-tryptophan extract, melatonin, and more. All organic, all the natural sources. It's the same price as leading brands of melatonin that are three milligrams a piece. It has three milligram, the standard recommended dose for an adult. It's got the GABA, so it would probably cost $50 to take all this as separate pills. It's 1995. You take one or two of these, and it just is really clean, restful sleep is what the reviews are. It's what I've experienced. 
and it just synergistically puts everything in there. The InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Or call 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.